Hi guys! Sorry it's been so long since the last video I've made. This whole college thing is pretty busy. But anyway, in this video I'm gonna show you how to scrape in Node. So I know web scraping is like pretty much the worst thing ever, but I decided to make a kind of short video on this because Node has this cool feature where you can use jQuery manipulation of the DOM on the back end through a module called Cheerio and it's kind of cool so I'll make a quick video about it. And so the first thing we're going to do is require the modules we need as usual. There are two modules we need to start off with. So one of them is called request. And this is basically like pretty much an all-purpose HTTP module because you can make get request, post request, put, delete, whatever. But for our purposes, we're just going to use get request to download the web pages that we want to scrape. And then the other thing we need is Cheerio. And Cheerio is that jQuery manipulation I talked about earlier. And so to start off with, we start off with creating a request. And to do that, you just do request, you use the request function. And the first parameter is just the URL that you want to scrape, well, the, the URL that you want to download, I guess, the web page. So let's just use Reddit for our, this example. Um, I don't actually go on Reddit often, so that's a disclaimer. I just thought it would be fun to use for a scraping video. The other thing about scraping is if you're watching this further into the future, I mean, Reddit's markup may change a lot. And so what goes on here might not necessarily work in the future just because Reddit's page has changed. And so, like, you know, that's the problem with web scraping but I'm just gonna go through like a simple example and I think you can get how scraping works in general with Node and use them for your own purposes. And so there's a callback function on request and it takes parameters of error, response, and body. Um, actually, in addition to this URL, I mentioned that you can do a lot of other things with the request besides get requests. And to do that, instead you use the um, you put in an options object instead of the URL. So these are all the options you can have. This is the GitHub for request right here. And so you can go to that and check that out if you want to use it in the future. There are a lot of different things you can do. But so anyway, if you're just doing a regular get request, you put on an URL and it just defaults to getting that web page. And so then we have our callback function. You might be wondering why there's a response and a body. Um, well, I'm, I think the body is just for convenience because you can also get the body from just doing response.body, but you know, whatever. And so we wanna, we wanna scrape this web page as long as there are no errors, we didn't get any errors in downloading and that we got a status code of 200 in our response. And so to check for that, let's do if there's no error and the response is status code. So response of resp dot status code is 200. Then we will put some code in here to work with. And so what do we want to do? Um, let's look at Reddit. Okay. So we're on Reddit, we can, I think we can just, let's just get all of these links here. So like there are 25 top links on the Reddit homepage. Let's get what all of them link to. Let's get the URLs of all of those. So actually let's go back to here. So to use Cheerio, which is um, the module that provides jQuery manipulation of web pages on the back end, like I told you about, we have to load the HTML we have into Cheerio. And so the way you do that um, is Cheerio.load, and then we'll just load the body into Cheerio, and then it just parses it and such to make it available for manipulation. And we're gonna save that to a variable. Um, and so to make it just like simpler in a jQuery intuitive sense, I'm just going to use dollar. And I think that's like what is typical to use for Cheerio it just makes it look even more jQuery-ish if you just do it that way, intuitive. 
And so what we can do after that is literally just use jQuery selectors on the back end. That's why I think this is kind of kind of cool. And so, you know, dollar and then here put your selector in here. And so let's go find out what we want to use for our selector to get all of these links. So I'm on Chrome right now and I opened up the JavaScript console. You can of course do this with Firebug as well. But anyway, if I click on this little magnifying glass here, I can hover over elements and it'll show me um, what like classes they have attached to them. And if I click on them, it'll appear within the markup and show me where it is in the DOM. And so if I hover over all of these little, all of these links, you'll notice that all of them have the class title attached to them. So we can definitely use that as a selector. But besides using that, we want to provide some sort of context for jQuery to look in. So the way to make your jQuery searches faster is, I mean, you don't want jQuery to look through the entire document starting from the root every single time. So instead, you provide a context for it to run in. And it's usually an ID because jQuery is very fast with IDs. And so if we, let's go up from this, this link. So we have all these different classes and we need something, we need a context that has all the links in it, right? So that I can find every single link. No, 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 no. Oh, yay, site table. So Reddit has this little div with ID site table that contains, if you look all the way down, it has all the links from the front page within it. So we could definitely use that as a context. And so we just use jQuery selectors in the normal way. So first I'm gonna do find all links that have the class title with them, and then just search in the context of site table. That's how you do that. Um, so what do we wanna do with this? For now, let's just save all the URLs we get to an array. Let me create an array URLs. This? Okay, and then to do that, can use jQuery's little each function and then you know use that callback so right now in this each loop we have all the elements like all the links but we want just the URLs within those links not the elements themselves so we want to get the attribute of href basically you know so instead of this whole thing, we just want this imager link. And so to do that, simply use this dot attribute href. Oh, and of course, I'm gonna just like save that to a little URL. Okay, awesome. And then, um, and then just push it onto the URLs array. Okay, awesome. Let's log that to our console and make sure that works. So I'm gonna open up a new terminal. All right, I'm gonna cd to my directory, so I'm in. And then just simply run node scraping.js to run the file. Oh, whoops. Forgot. Before we run this, of course, we need to install our dependency. So we have to install request and Cheerio. So simply do that by doing npm install request Cheerio. Okay, and then let's do node scraping.js. Ooh, we get a ton of URLs back. So these are all the URLs from the front page. If you're not convinced, let's also print out the length of the URLs and make sure it's 25 because we wanted 25 of them. Get 25 and you can check as long as it's not too far in the future and markup hasn't changed. Check to make sure that it works. Um, so yeah, that is really all there is to scraping in Node. I, I really like Cheerio, I think, and so it's really simple. This, this is really short though, so maybe let's just do something fun to continue on. So Reddit has a lot of imager links, right? So here's an imager link. It's the top link right now. Here's another one, except this is an album. So it's 
you can tell what things are on Imager from the URL pretty easily. So if it's an album, it'll be imager.com slash a slash. If it's just the image itself without like the comments and everything, it has i.imager.com with a JPEG. You can easily turn this into the page with the comments by getting rid of the file extension and getting rid of the i dot. And there you go, you have the comments now. So let's just get all of the imager links that are i.imager.com. So the ones that are just the images. So to do that, we can do if, whoops, I need to move this until afterwards. We can check if url.index of i.imager.com does not equal negative one, then we'll add the URL to URLs. And so what we've done here is basically check to see if i.imager.com is in the URL that we got, and if it is, then we'll push it to our array. And so let's check that. Okay, so now we only get i.imager.com links. And so after that, well, there's actually something kind of fun we can do. We can we can write all of these images to streams and save them to our computer. So the way we do that is we, okay, we made one big request to reddit.com, right? Well, we can make additional requests just, just to these URLs that we just saved in our URLs array. And then once we get those, we can write them to a stream. So let's do that. So the way we do that is, you know, you use the request function again, except, well, first let me, sorry, first let me loop over all the URLs um, in the URLs array. So for var i equals zero, i is less than URLs dot length, and then i plus plus. So to loop through those, and then we want to make a request to each of the URLs that we have saved in that array. So request URL i, and so that's it. We don't want a callback function for this because we can do something else to write it to a stream. We pipe it to a stream, but right now we're gonna need something else, which is the file stream module. So file stream equals require file stream. Awesome. And then fs.create write stream. And so where do we wanna write these files to? Why don't we just like make a directory called images? So make directory mkdir images. And of course you can just make that directory by going to your like documents viewer or whatever you use, my finder as well. And so anyway, I'm gonna write it to stream. And then let's just um, have the file name be the number that we used. And then we can just use the extension JPEG. Um, you can also change this to use the extension there is on the imager URL itself, but the reason it doesn't really matter is, okay, if you go to an imager image, try changing the file extension. Oh look, you get the same thing. Oh look, you get the same thing. I mean, it might be like different technically, but I don't know, it doesn't really matter, I think. And so, yeah, we can try that out and see what happens. Node scraping dot JS. Oh, whoops, I need another parentheses right there. Sorry. Node scraping dot JS. And I need an S there. Sorry, so many like little tiny mistakes. Up. Okay, awesome. And now let's look at our images. Yay! So now we have all the top imager images from Reddit on our computer. And so that's kind of fun. Um, if you want a little challenge, so let's go back to Reddit. You can search for the imager albums on Reddit. 
So look through all of these like 25 links and check to see if any of them are imager albums. And so that's imager.com slash a slash. And if they are, then scrape the album links themselves and get all the links of the images in the album and then save the images in the album to a directory on your computer. <laughs> that sounds kind of tedious, but if you're watching this not too far in the future and everything's still the same and you just want to try something out, that might be something to try out. Okay, and Reddit and Imager, Imager both have APIs, and so you should definitely use that instead of scraping. But if you ever need to scrape something, you know, that doesn't have an API, such as the UC Berkeley website, which is like the worst website ever, um... But anyway, yeah, so it can be useful for that. And that's, yeah, hope this was kind of fun and maybe you can use it in the future. Hopefully you won't need to scrape, but like, whatever. Um, yeah, th leave comments, let me know. Tell me if you managed to download images and albums. So have fun.